What's going on, everybody? It is me, Casey, Francis, O'Brien. And I just wanted to give you guys an update about what happened in court. This is for people that have been following along this very long journey where I started off this channel after having a lot of spiritual breakthroughs. And I had already gotten off the cusp of 2019 to 2021 with kind of training. It was very difficult, but I learned the skills necessary to be able to survive what I've endured. And a big part of my story seems to be Casey O'Brien versus the state of Vermont. I've always loved how beautiful this place is. I've never felt at home here. And I've always felt this big feeling that there's something really wrong with this place. Like I shouldn't, even as a child waking up and going through, I felt like a stranger. And when I, the closer I get to New York City, the more at home I feel. But I don't think that should be right. Because when you look around, the greens here are brighter than Maine. The trees here are brighter than Maine. The mountains here are bigger than the ones in Maine. It's sprinkled with tiny little villages. And the villages all have lakes. And they're they might have they're just starting to get on TikTok, but for the most part, it was like I got to stay in I got to experience more time away from the MK Ultra mind control that's going on in the cities. So I took it as I was supposed to be here, because if you look at the facts, Casey being a tree, Casey meaning the tree, 33 life path, whatever, my dad spending his whole life here and being ostracized except for by rich people. Intelligent people and rich people love my father. Women love my father. Everyone else hates him. So I, you know, it's in my genetics. If you don't like me, there's usually something really wrong with you. Right? Right. So I stayed here, and since a child, I've been working towards making this better. Since I was 13, I wanted to have a residential facility that would instill growth mindsets in children that grew up in the wrong world that I was forced to be a part of. Since I was born, since I was born, basically, I wanted to save kids. But I didn't want to do. I never wanted to do it in a conventional way because I felt like the system was wrong. And the more the more I get older, the more I realize that my innate intuition was correct. That the only people that like this world are as fucked up as it, or you tuned it out and you settled into a meaningless life. And those people tend to hate me because I embody perseverance. I'm an archetype in your mind. Let me tell you, so the lawyer for my last case, and I was going to make it short. This case is for, remember, I broke down in a small town, fighting to get a job. Nobody would hire me. They even poured coffee grounds on their food the gas station would throw out food they found out i was eating it i thanked the manager i said thank you for not being one of those gas stations then they started and they said fuck you junkie and i don't do drugs i smoke cigarettes back then i had a vape because i had friends that worked in vape places that i was helping them through the simulation and they were helping me not have to smoke cigarettes but also have a vice that isn't biting my thumb like mike tyson to get over trauma for being a caged animal like Mike Tyson. So I keep going, crypto's booming. I'm on my phone every day. It's some nights it's sub zero. I didn't have a coat back then. Remember I was begging for a coat? So I was in my car hiding under a Walmart throw blanket in my nest. There were veterans, so like fat, old, in their 60s and 70s, that would don their uniform. And they would just come stand by me. Because they were feeling the energy. And they had prejudice. So the whole town was talking. Finally, 
somebody was nice enough to tell me that they have Capstone there. They have a community action program. The community action program puts me in touch with a church. The church is right up the road. I can't tell you at this point whether I went to the church first or I went to the... This has been an amazing journey. This has been amazing. <laughs> I've been through so much, man. And I did it alone. So... It's just cold, and I'm outside, and I'm hungry, and I have no access to food. Somehow I made money. It was probably YouTube donations back then. I don't know how I got it in cash, but at some point I wound, I wound up with cash. So I was going into this laundromat, this 24-hour laundromat, studying crypto at night, studying TikTok affiliate programs, studying just different stuff about how to make money on the internet, e-commerce, services, different stuff I can do with just my phone. And I'm getting in tons of Discord groups, I'm becoming mods and crypto groups, so I'm trying to, I'm helping, I'm working, and I'm working from that laundromat, and every hour, because I, I know how prejudiced and mentally unstable white people are, that they, they will talk themselves into justifying violence, and then they'll go out because they want to hurt people. It's not like a gang, like, we gotta do this, we have to do this, or we're not gonna get out of this. You gotta go kill him, or else they're gonna get us. This is, I can't fucking wait to hurt someone, oh my god. Oh, a junkie? Let me bitch about it to the whole town until somebody makes it feel okay. And then we'll just figure out what rules we can break. And I hope to god I get to put my knee against his face. Or Tate, mace him through a tent and then tell everybody that he, it was his fault. Just so I can put my dick in his face. Please God, let me do it, oh my God. So that was happening. Um, then we have, we, there were, so I was buying, I was spending all my money every hour, I was spending a dollar at this guy, Seth, who owns a laundromat in Randolph, Vermont. I was buying a soda from the machine and I would put it up to the camera, like, please, please don't do it. And then I'd go drink the soda and I'd keep going. I was making content. I was making people laugh. I was making people have a, <laughs> I was bettering people's lives. Then I'm finally working through enough that I, because it's a constant battle out here when you don't have a safety net to go, you don't have a bed or a shower or a fridge. You don't get to pretend. You don't, you're not allowed to be a pussy. You heard me? And you don't get to lock your door. So you're at the whim of anyone who's around you. And what I've realized is that we're in a simulation. <laughs> so the, there's always people around. <laughs> so I get to this threshold where I'm back in the present moment and I'm about to go make something better happen. And I'm working through, I'm still writing songs. I wrote a song called St. Casey, Found His Way to Greatness. Went deranged and fought a decade to be famous. Turns out it's all just a simulation. Went across the states. Ate from the dumpster, slept on pavement. Made a thousand perfect songs and he came back just to play them for the people that love to hate him. Stagnated. Stuck in low places. Lane switching. Lame killing. He paved a trail for hopeless orphan children. He raised the stakes and changed the state by staying different. I ain't schizophrenic, bitch. My brain is gifted. I didn't do it for the cheese. I don't care about how it's graded. If you got a dream, set your hair and heart ablaze and fight every single day to maintain it. And then as soon as I... There was one line that God won't give me right now. Or myself won't give me. It's just not coming to my head. As soon as I hit done <laughs> on that verse, I turn around and there's a guy like, What are you doing here? And I'm playing basketball outside a daycare on a weekend. 
Like, what are you doing here? So I know it's a demon. I've dealt with so many police in my life. They gave my father brain damage when I was seven and they beat me. No, I was nine, sorry. I was nine and they hurt me. They got so mad at my dad for existing. It must have trickled off on me unless they saw the same thing, which is a genetic disposition from a multi-generational bloodline of badasses. Carefree, charismatic kings. <laughs> so that's something that they'll never have. So they want to take it from you. So I pulled out my phone and I recorded him. And I fucked with him. I was like, what? Say it again. Because he wants to be black. And the drugs are keeping him in cognitive dissonance. And he was mad at me because I embody an archetype that expresses traits that he's afraid of. If you dig a little deeper, you'll find out his woman was in his girl, that the church next door was for a battered women's shelter of women fleeing domestic abuse. And I'm the attractive guy that was playing basketball. So he shows up because his girlfriend is up there hiding from him. I made a fool of him. I made him make a fool of himself. Then I called out the fact that all that shit is gay. It's gay. Think about it. It's gay. Took him on a roller coaster. I leave. Have my kundalini awakening that night. The girl comes in suddenly because I ask about a simulation. And then one woman comes in and describes my ex-girlfriend and asks if I've seen her. And I'm like, I'm not. No. Then she leaves. Ask God if it's a simulation. Then the other girl walks by. So I'm like, okay. Angel intervention. Maybe you should talk to your ex-girlfriend. But new girl comes in. I hit on new girl. I feel like I've broken free from all the <laughs> brainwashing from the years of abuse I had just endured. And I finally can get back into it and be myself. The guy that did pick up artistry since he was 14. And she leaves happy. She goes that way. Her boyfriend comes in and tries to kill me with a baton. He tries to threaten me with a baton. He leaves. I turn the camera on because I know he's a demonic puppet possessed. He freezes in place because the puppet or the alien or whatever you'd call it, the, the thing from Scooby-Doo, cyber space, the cyber thing, the, the uh, Avogadro from Black Ops Zombies, the thing, the electric monster piloting him in the, fifth, in the electromagnetic spectrum stops because I've captured the light on the camera. So he gets puffeted, turns around, and then I walk up to him I'm like, you're fucking nuts. You're a crazy person. You have horrible mental health issues. Your parents would be ashamed of you. I don't understand how people like you exist. I hate white people. I tried so hard to be like you guys, and you guys bullied me the whole way. Now I realize you guys suck, you're stupid, and your women will be mine. <laughs> I didn't say that exactly. I said, have you ever been to a city? You're fucking stupid crazy everybody calls me crazy they talk shit about me i'm just an, a determined overthinker i take things to the limit and i use my mind and i don't succumb to the will of others unless i agree with it without without compromise so he swings i swing i have a hatchet i'm better than him i win then from there, it's just been white American bullshit liars that hate because they hate something that I have inside. It's been lies, <laughs> lies and abuse, prejudice. But in 2020, I asked God, I when BLM came out and I was like, maybe they have a different, better energy because of year, years of genetics. Maybe they are a different culture. Maybe they are a different species. There's something I, I resonate better with black people than I do whites, at least in Vermont. I seem to only have black and Native American friends or Puerto Rican friends. Maybe there's something to it. So I asked God, like, I know I grew up, I grew, I know I grew up bad, but I also didn't grow up in the projects. Let me feel what it's like to be black so I can go through it and I can have, give me, get me to the truth. And I'll have I have I have had experiences that I can't I'm not going to share with anyone because until it's time because I want it to be special. But there 
their unique experiences, and I've lived an amazing movie. I, I got cast in one of God's best movies because I asked him to for months, and I persevered. When I say I persevered, I'm saying there are things that you don't understand that I've been through, that you'll never be able to understand that I've been through, because for the most part, nobody should subject themselves to the things that I've been through. But I'm very grateful for what I've been through because of how I've changed and the character that I've developed by realness. That's what I wanted, was to be real. And I realized that they had kept me in this gaslighting, perpetuated white culture, white privilege nonsense of this fake community where they keep secrets about the true nature of what's really going on so that they can take advantage and pedophile kids through sexual energy in the communities. I'll leave you to unpack that. For the most part, I'm talking about the court case. So the police already tried to get me with assaulting him first. They said I swung first because they didn't have him on camera or he just didn't move enough. But I was there. I was right in front of him. He had the baton down any movement at all and I'm gonna swing I told him put the baton away or I'm gonna swing I've got the hatchet put the baton away and he wouldn't and then he lifted it up like this when he should have put it behind him or dropped it he had a weapon then the police came back and tried to blame me they came back twice with the lizard eyes and the freaky vibes and the piece of shit on drugs got in trouble for raping a woman I'm sitting there in the laundromat with the baton that he used that they refused to take as evidence even though i can tell they think they're so sneaky because they've never been to a city and if they have they haven't lived there long enough to know that i can just see seeping from their skin the scheming little weasel that's piloting them i can smell a scheming weasel from a while a mile away so i'm sitting there with the baton and i'm like i can feel god trying to work and then a Jehovah's Witness comes up and we talk about it. A Jehovah's Witness got called to me as I'm surrounded by gang stalkers that might not even be real. They might be bots in the simulation. These random strangers that follow me through towns that show up and keep showing up that seem to be led the same direction that I'm paving. They're just going down my trail and they wind up next to me. Over and over and over and over again trying to suck the life force out of me until I feel like I'm powerless and depleted and then I go crying on the camera about this is what's happening to me. And then I, maybe I can find some people that get it, but they're always schemy weasels. There's always something about them that's schemy that I have to uncover like a Sagittarius with the curiosity and fundamental independence. But they don't charge me, but they don't charge him either, and they don't seem to care. I get I perform my song to everyone in the in the laundromat. Then I perform it for a guy that show random guy that shows up, gives me a cigarette and ten bucks. He works at the music theater next door, and they're putting new flooring in, and he go, he wants to hire me. But I've been awake freezing cold studying cryptocurrency for a week now, and I can't find any place to sleep because everywhere I go, rednecks are showing up to try to stop the guy from just sleeping in freezing cold. So I, I was wandering around per fighting, fighting every day. So I finally am like, okay, they like me here. The guys support me they're jehovah's witnesses i have a job lined up tomorrow my life is gonna go in a good i finally made it i could perform my songs there i'm gonna get some income so i lay down in the laundromat i wake up and it's a white cop kicking me the guy changed his mind the jehovah's witness changed his mind because he felt disrespected that i would sleep for two hours in a place that I had been staying for a week and a half. So he's fat as fuck. As I'm being pushed out the door by an angry prejudiced police trying to push me and rape my spirit, literally. <laughs> I'm like, what happened to God? Then I went, uh, I took a bus to the nearest city, got back on food stamps came back trespassed from half the town everywhere I had gone into every single one of those if you walk down Randolph in Vermont every single one of those businesses I went into every gas station I 
I tried. So eventually they move move my car. Then the guy that said I could put my car on his property calls the police. Changed his changed his mind. Instead of just talking to me, they call the police to hurt me. Not to sound like a bitch. They take my car. The guy that tows my car leaves it hanging out of the parking spot right in the way of traffic. Because he want they want me gone. So they're like, I'm not gonna do my job right. I ask him to and he won't. Then the girl then there's tons of drug addicts, gang stalkers, violence, rednecks, rapists, police, guys that would just stare at me through the window and jerk off. I caught a guy twi two different guys twice, so four times. I woke up, the guy next to me is looking at me through the window, through his window, and he's dick in hand jerking off. I'm still making content. I'm still gaining subscribers. I'm working on crypto. I make I turn thirty dollars. I turn three dollars into thirty dollars. I have it lined up where I can turn twenty five dollars into twenty five hundred dollars. I was correct. It got to twenty five hundred dollars. Something burned my computer. So it's probably a hacker or somebody that was in the Telegram group. Fried my circuits because he was watching my YouTube and he was in my Telegram group. My computer burns. I lose all the money. Then a woman comes up and says that the police just dropped her off and she got raped. I'm so traumatized. I understand that she's telling the truth. I talk to her. I help her get home. I talk to her dad. She's like 30 to 40. I don't know. And also my memory's hazy because I have a regressing brain injury I'm constantly fighting. But does it seem like I'm able to articulate things better than most people? So maybe I'm just working out my mind. And I'm very happy to be in suffering like this. Isn't that the point of life? Every one you look up to says that. And you don't do it enough. Unless you do. But you don't. Um, at 22.22, at I've got two minutes left. Basically, it got so violent and bad because I called the police out on the YouTube. They found out I had the channel. The person at the barn made up lies that I took a hatchet and threatened to kill her with a hatchet in the barn surrounded by everybody, except nobody else. If the police went in and asked anybody, they would have said no. But because the police are already trying to hurt me, I think they worked together so they could come try to hurt me. They ended up robbing my car. They stole stuff out of my car illegally. They violated my Fourth Amendment right. Unless they counted as abandoned, even though they know I'm in the car. I just wasn't there at the time. And the door was unlocked because... The battery was dead. And it was cold, so it was easy to just crawl in, get in the nest easier. It was below freezing some nights. I'm on top of a mountain. But eventually it gets so bad, the police won't stop, the crackheads won't stop, all this won't stop. I went and did Vivek's cabin. Um, then eventually I made it up to Vermont State College. I had learned how to do Native American singing. I got in tune with the culture. I sing and just walk through an empty, empty space. There are people walking their dog in the college as well. I'm having a good time. Everyone's having a good time. Security shows up a couple days later with trespass notices that, and say that Phil Scott called me an engine and told me to stop squawking on the property. I get trespassed. I come back. I make another post a couple weeks later about what the police did because they continue to do it. They continue to harass and stalk me. I make one video about it, about what that I know what they did and I know why they're doing it. They steal my car right before a hurricane and a tornado. That was their excuse. The only place that's available for me to hide from a what they're saying is going to be a massive flood is on the top of that hill. So I had to trespass either way. I went on the trails. I couldn't be in the cemetery because there were people there. I went in and there was no place to stay sheltered. So I go on the trails looking for a place that's above ground. I wind up in a field. There's a shack in the field. The shack has an outlet. It's got a solar panel running. I just go there, I get, I bo before the storm comes, I get DoorDash for a couple days, I buy a couple pizzas with the donation money, and I just wait the storm out. I'm expecting to just clean up and leave and everything's going to be fine, but the security guard prick had been watching me for days, waiting for the storm to end so that he could get me arrested.